In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today, it does come from the book of Daniel. We're going to continue in our series on Daniel. And we remember that if you've been paying attention and you remember where we left off last time we were talking about this, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream that was translated by Daniel. And it predicted that he was going to be cut off for mankind, that he was essentially going to live like a beast. And that was going to happen for seven periods of time. And so this actually does happen to Nebuchadnezzar. This prophecy comes true. And, and for seven years, he lives apart from mankind. Not only is he not the king, he's not even really living like a human. His hair grows long. His It says his fang- fingernails become like claws. And he is living like a beast out in the wild, eating grass and, and fending for himself. But that's not where the story ends, and that's really where we start out today in the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verses 34 through 37. And so it reads, But at the end of that period, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes towards heaven, and my reason returned to me. And I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever, for his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are among the inhabit uh, all of the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as to nothing, but he does according to his will in the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and no one can ward off his hand or say to him, "What have you done?" At that time, my reason returned to me, and my majesty and splendor were restored to me for the glory of my kingdom. And my counselors and my nobles began seeking me out. So I was reestablished in my sovereignty, and surpassing greatness was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise, exalt, and honor the King of heaven, for all his works are true and his ways are just. And he is able to humble those who walk in pride. The change we see in Nebuchadnezzar is sort of symbolic in his physical appearance. But the real change that the writer Daniel focuses on, and that Nebuchadnezzar himself seems to focus on, is spiritual. That he underwent this time, and you'll remember that the reason that God struck him down, the reason that he was separated from mankind and lived like a beast, is because he was out looking at his kingdom and thinking how amazing he was and how he's been able to to build all this, and he is the reason that this great kingdom of Babylon has been able to flourish and it has essentially conquered a lot of the known world. And he was thinking, man, I'm just so incredible that I've been able to do all of this. He didn't recognize that not only was Babylon the beneficiary of God and, and God allowed them to grow to that size and stature amongst the other nations, but he also ignores the fact that even if it had been him, even if it had been his intelligence and cleverness and wisdom, and God hadn't helped Babylon out in that way, even if that were true, where did that wisdom and cleverness and knowledge, where did all that come from? It was granted to him by God. And that's the important thing that we need to remember, is that anything that we have, everything that we are, is the product of God. And I really love the way that the Bible phrases this. And I'm accustomed to the old King James. I teach out of a New American Standard, but the poetic nature of the King James sometimes, I think, gives a better description here. You'll remember that in the verse that we just read, it says, and my reason returned to me. Because like I said, when we were studying this earlier, when the transformation took place, without God, we're essentially just animals, living on instinct and doing whatever feels right. With God, we have laws, we have order, we have purpose. 
and we can live like men, free men, that choose to love God and, and do what's right according to his commandments. It's the only way to truly be yourself. It's the only way to truly be an individual. And what we're looking at here is the return of that reason, that the light of reason suddenly comes back to Nebuchadnezzar, that because he realizes that all of this is because of God and the only way to live and to truly live is to live in accordance with God's will, that's the reason that he was able to return to a human state. The reason that he was able to return to a life of reason and order and live like somebody that is crafted in the image of God. And I want you to also notice here that in the King James, it says, and I returned to myself. You see, the world gives us a fake sense of individuality. It wants us to think that wearing an ironic t-shirt or a nose ring or having a strange tattoo or a crazy haircut, that that's somebody that's being a real individual. No, first of all, those people typically wind up all looking alike. Uh, that was one thing that I always thought was really funny. And this girl, thankfully, was a friend of mine, and she knew that I wasn't trying to be offensive when I said this. Uh, it was a gothic girl that I went to high school with, and I asked her why she decided to dress in all black and paint her fingernails black and all that stuff. And she said, well, it's just to let other people know that I'm a real individual. And I said, but you look like every other gothic kid. <laughs> and that's the thing. The world offers a false sense of individual, uh, individualism. It says, just live by your emotions, live by your impulses, do whatever feels right to you. Well, if you do that and everybody else is doing that, then you're not an individual. That's what most people do. That's what the majority of the people in the world do. You never really become who you were meant to be until you start living in accordance to the way that your creator made you. Because your creator made you for a specific purpose. And so you can fall into this trap of living like Nebuchadnezzar did, living like a beast apart from mankind, just living on instinct, which he did in a very literal way. This is more figurative. But we can do that and get this false sense of individualism, this false sense of individuality. But if we really want to become individuals, if we really want to live in a dynamic way, a way that we were created to do, that we're fulfilling the purpose that we were always intended for, that from the very time that we were created and stitched together in the womb, if we want to live that life, we want to live out our real purpose, the only way to do that is by following God. The only way to find that, to find that task that only we have, that place that God has carved out in the world specifically for us, that we can be real individuals, is by following God and submitting to his wisdom. And that's what Nebuchadnezzar learned. Nebuchadnezzar wasn't 100% wrong when he thought about how great he was. He was great. In the dream, he was this great big tree that other people found shelter in and prospered. The thing is, he lost sight of why he was there. The thing is, he lost sight of his purpose. And that's really in a sense, what pride is, isn't it? It robs us of our perspective and makes us think that we're the reason that we live. We're the reason that we exist. And it's not that way. We tend to think of ourselves as people who are supposed to live for ourselves and just do what we want. But the truth is, Nebuchadnezzar, even when he didn't realize it, as the king before this happened, he was serving a purpose that fit into God's plan. And once this horrific event happened to him that God allowed to happen, and then later on, his reason returned to him, well, you can see his reaction in the scripture. He understood now that the reason that he was able to accomplish much and the reason that he was where he was in life is because God allowed it. Because God wanted him in that position. And because of that, he suddenly had a sense of gratitude. And the way that this passage ends is, he is able to humble those who walk in pride. Nebuchadnezzar got a very hard lesson in that. But he does. 
Because when we compare ourselves to God, we compare ourselves to his love and his mercy and his power and his majesty. It first instills in us a sense of awe and wonder and humbles us in the sense that we realize how completely far away we are from him in terms of being far less powerful, far less knowledgeable, far less wise, all of those things. But it also, in a sense, brings us very close to him because we realize how much we depend on him, how much we need him, and how grateful we are that he cares about us and wants us to do the right thing and live a life that is dynamic. And that the only way that he can do that is if we choose to follow him. Stay the course, friends. Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel. But the truth is, I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.